Ladies and gentlemen, I am Kome Halata, an emeritus researcher at the National Institute for Material Science. On behalf of the recycling companies listed here, I will present the urban mine metals to be used in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics and their significance. I use an artificial audio system to communicate better than my poor pronunciation. These are the gold and silver bronze medals of the Tokyo Olympics scheduled for 2020. The gold medal is 550 grams silver and 6 grams gold is plated. And silver 550 grams, bronze 450 grams. To make these metals, we needed 3,500 kilograms of silver, 2,200 kilograms of copper, and 32 kilograms of gold. All of these gold and silver copper were collected by the citizens' hands by recycling. Approximately 6 million end-of-life mobile phones and 80,000 tons of used small home appliances were collected. By the collaboration of 1,621 local governments across Japan. In this way, the Tokyo Olympics are ready for the winners to be handed over urban mining medals with the hearts of their citizens. We have made various efforts to realize this urban mining medal. The metals on this slide are urban mining metals which we made prototypes before the planning how to make the Tokyo Olympic medal. Gold recycled from electronic equipment is used for gold plating on the surface of this metal. Look at how gold is taken out from used electronic devices in a movie. Ten prototypes were product, and handing them to the Tokyo Metropolitan Government and Japan Olympic Committee. They also used them for campaigns in various places as such a photography. The right hand side of the photo is me, and the students of Wasta University have promoted the campaign. In addition, the urban mining bag campaign was also held to distribute paper bags to make it easier for citizens to bring end-of-life small electronic devices. In this way, citizens were able to recycle small appliances that were sufficient for the Olympic medals. I believe these activities were supported by awareness of importance of resource recycling in the era when sustainable supply of resources become more difficult. This slide was presented at the International Conference on Rare Metals held in Sendai in 2012, and shows the demand for metals by 2100. The vertical logolithmic axis presents how much times of amount of each metal will be required until the year 2100, compared with the amount of current natural reserve of each metal. This slide extends my former presentation at 2012 Davos Resource Forum. This blue area means the total demand till 2100 if economy growth linearly.
the current reserves are allocated proportionally. The remaining part is the amount that should be covered by recycling. By 2100, most metals must be supplied on a recycling basis. It is not so difficult. Urban mines are already growing on a daily basis around us. This chart shows the annual consumption of various metals in Japan on the horizontal axis, and on the vertical axis, the urban mining life, namely, accumulated amount of urban mine divided by the annual consumption of each metal. About iron, we have already accumulated 21 years worth of iron consumption in Japan. Gold is accumulated for 42 years demand, we have a great amount of urban mines. Japan government had analyzed how much critical metals are in urban mine. This shows the result of amount of metals in end-of-life small electric appliances in a year. As the amount level of metals in electric appliance different, this graph is separated. End-of-life electric appliance contains copper much. However the amount of sliver and gold are less but their values are greater than copper. Being considered the situation, the small home appliance recycling law was enacted in 2013, which is the background to the achievement of this urban mining metal. I will introduce another contribution of the urban mine metal to sustainability. This picture is used to explain the significance of urban mining metals to elementary school students. There are two kaiju yamaters of dinosaurs. One is Tyrannosaurus, where the earth has been devastated and angry. And the other is Stetacosaurus, which litter waste. The names of these dinosaurs are a wordplay in Japanese. Importantly, it tells elementary school students that recycling is fighting these two monsters. Tyrannosaurus has the weight of 38 ton as ecoruxic. Namely, total material requirement, for one gold medal, Stetacosaurus has 51 tons. These come from mainly mobile foes which contains various kind of critical metals. These critical metals give great damage to involve large quantities of natural resources. It is evaluated as TMR. About 50 kilograms of hidden resources outside the economy are used on a smartphone of 140 grams. If all the gold and silver equivalent to one Olympic gold medal are obtained from natural resources, 38 tons of hidden non-economic resources will be consumed for the global environment. Stetacosalus, the monster of littering, brings a famous e-waste problem. 51 tons of fresh soil is required to decontaminate hazardous material in smartphone for one gold medal, if it is dumped into environment. Thus, one urban mining metal is fighting with 38 tons of Tyrannosaurus and 51 tons of Stetacosaurus, for a sustainable society. I would like to add another important point on the issue of waste. In collected cell phones, gold goes to metal, but where to plastics, where to solder, in many cases, attention is paid to the recovering of gold, but not paid to other containing substances and processing solvents.
Now let me point out that there are actually two different ways to recycle materials. They are dilution type and extraction type. The dilution type dilutes contaminated impurities with virgin material to restore performance and regenerate. The recycling of iron and paper is a typical example. Major part of the waste is recycled, so it can be referred to as bulk recycle. On the other hand, the extraction type get out only the necessary ingredients. Since only what is needed is taken out, both virgin and recycled materials are of the same quality. A typical example is gold and silver used in metals. It can be called as substance recycle. However, the extraction type leaves a major problem. Dot after useful material is extracted, a great amount of residue remains. Therefore, when you recover a valuable material as substance recyclable, you need to process the remaining items at the same time. Residue recycle should be processed for zero emission. Gold is easy to extract as substance recycle, but it's hard to process the residue. In this urban mining metal, Japanese smelting companies has engaged with gold extraction by use of slag generated in processing or to eliminate residue. Thus the urban mining metal is produced in zero emission, which does not generate waste even by collecting small home appliances. The small home appliances that you have collected do not become garbage at all, they become metals, and they also become roads and buildings. Urban mined metals are spreading as symbols of recycling of local governments in Japan. I expect for Paris and Los Angeles to take over the urban mining metal that will be created through zero emission recycling. The urban mining metal is now a symbol of local events and is now spreading throughout the country. Let's continue to expand this initiative as a symbol of community development that everyone can make with the cooperation of everyone in recycling. Thank you very much for your kind attention.